Уважаеми зрители на БНТ HD, приятели на тениса на маса, здравейте от Арена Сарелф Панагюнище, където след минути ни очаква една много наситена вечерна сесия от международния турнир по тенис на маса Сарел България Опен 2017. Двубоите за разпределението на медалите започнаха още от вторник с квалификационните групи. Близо 200 състезатели от 4 континента стартираха в третото поредно издание на турнира. Но сега на полуфиналната фаза останаха само най-заслужените да са в битката за първите места. Битка, която ще бъде решена в утрешния ден. И сега вече е време да насочим поглед към това, което ни очаква. При дамите полуфиналите противопоставят Касуми и Шикава първата поставена. Носителката на два олимпийски медала срещу... Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the ITTF Seamaster 2017 World Tour Asarel Bulgaria Open, coming to you live from Panagurista, Bulgaria. I'm your commentator, Adam Bobro, and we are getting into the women's singles semi-finals. Very first matchup of the night. We've got Miu Kato right there, who is in outstanding form, showing us earlier against Hitomi Sato. What a performance from this young player. And she'll be playing against the former number one player from the Japanese national team, Kasumi Ishikawa, who is the top seed in this tournament. Miyu Kato won four games to one over Hitomi Sato just earlier today. Kasumi Ishikawa won four to zero over Asuka Sasao in her last round in the quarterfinals. This will be another best of seven match. It'll be the first time these two have played on the world tour. Should be quite exciting. And here's the schedule ahead for today. Following this match, we've got Honoka Hashimoto, Mima Ito, and then after that, Kenta Tazue and Kenta Matsudaira. Following that will be Dimitri Ovtra versus Quadri Aruna, a match that many people will be quite curious about. Quadri Aruna has beaten some of the best in the world, but the best European player has not yet faced him. So we'll see what happens if Dimitri Ovtrov can dodge the forehand, outplay the touch and the fast footwork of Quadri Aruna. And if Quadri Aruna can stop the backhand, the serves and everything else that Dima has to offer, it'll definitely be an uphill battle, but wouldn't be surprised, anything can happen with Quadri Aruna. But right now, just the same, Kasumi Ishikawa and Miyu Kato will be playing out here. Now, Miyu Kato's game is quite unconventional. Her serves are very difficult to receive. Her forehand stroke, as we saw against Choppers, earlier today, at least against, oh, and before, well, I was gonna say Hitomi Sato, but here you can see Kasumi Ishikawa very carefully checking out the rubber of her opponent's racket, Miyu Kato, to make sure she was familiar with how bouncy the rubber is, how thick the sponge is, what she can expect from both sides. It's funny because it is up to a certain level. It almost doesn't make that much of a difference. As a beginner, you wouldn't know the difference looking at these two rackets, but at the professional level, Anything from just a change in thickness of sponge or a new top sheet of rubber, anything of that sort, even if it's the same model, could make a big difference for both of these players. So head-to-head -head again, they've never played before. Kasumi Ishikawa currently world rank number seven. Miyu Kato world rank number 30. But world rankings only mean so much in the sense that style matchups are a big deal and we've already seen many upsets in this tournament the fact that so many japanese players on both sides have made it as far as they have including kenta tazoe and looking at the world rankings miyu kato is the lowest world ranked player left in the tournament on the women's side as she puts in her eye drops there we've even seen her doing it at towel breaks throughout kasumi ishikawa checking out the lights now with all the advantages and disadvantages that come up in table tennis, Kasumi Ishikawa is left-handed, which gives her an advantage. That advantage is that the opponent is not used to playing left-handed players. Left-handed players are much more rare. But Kasumi Ishikawa far more experienced playing right-handed players than the other way around. So a little bit more, Kasumi Ishikawa in the opening round beat Mizuki Morizono four games to zero than earlier today. Asuka Sasao, 4-0. You can see some of her world tour, I'd say, performances. The results up here, I guess, is a perfect word for it, as it says on screen. Kasumi Ishikawa's taken many titles, but in 2017, still leaves a bit to be desired. Is expected to take the title here in this tournament in Bulgaria. 
But again, it's an open field. You've got Mima Ito and Honoka Hashimoto on the other side. Kasumi Ishikawa, the most experienced player from Japan here. Strongest and most experienced. At 18 years old, Miyu Kato, eighth seed, world rank number 30, as I mentioned before. A chance to see some of her experience over there. She really does, I think, the fastest strawberry I've ever seen in the women's game came from Miyu Kato. It was at the World Championships. She just turned that backhand and played it way out to her opponent's wide forehand with so much speed. This shot can be very effective. Miyu Kato in the opening round beat Misaki Morizono. After that, earlier today, Hitomi Sato. So I'm really quite excited to see how this style matchup goes down. Again, there's a lot of shuffling going on right now in the women's program for Japan because there are so many strong players fighting for just a few spots. Still three years before we get to the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. But in that time, there are probably about a good 15 or 16 women who realistically could be on the Olympic team. And I'd say about five or six that are way in the front runner. I'd say that are the front runners, but still, They've been beaten by some of the lower players on the team. And Miyu Kato starting off with the shovel serve with underspin to take the point. Now one thing about Miyu Kato's game that can be so, I'd say, distracting for many players or difficult to face is that because her timing is so different and her shots are so unconventional, it just really breaks the rhythm of the opponent, makes them uncomfortable to find their game many times. Kasumi Ishikawa, with all her experience, will do her best and is pretty likely to find her rhythm at some point. But so far, this game has not yet. You can see the lower bounce on that tacky forehand rubber, the Chinese rubber on the forehand. Oh, almost comes down on the table. With a serve receive like that, Kasumi Ishikawa, again, from this angle, it's tough to tell, but Kasumi Ishikawa looks like she should be able to easily win that point. Kato still almost comes back. But this serve drifts a little too long, and Ishikawa's quick to recognize it, takes the opening attack. Just clearing the fly out there, making sure there are no distractions. Unfortunate third ball opportunity for Miyu Kato. Tomahawk serve there. Comes out to the forehand as expected. Just a little late to get there. That's Kasumi Ishikawa working with the spin. There was the strawberry. Coming around the outside of the ball. The opposite of the banana flip. Or the chiquita as they say in Japan. Chiquita. After the brand name, of course, Four Bananas. Second strawberry, but this time it's adjusted. Kasumi Ishikawa reads the spin well, stays on top of it, and accounts for the side spin to keep it in play. <laughs> Strong opening backhand. This time the Tomahawk comes down with some underspin on it. Long push comes back, and it's the opening backhand. See her rehearsing the strawberry out there, getting that wrist nice and loose. It's always interesting to see how someone plays after they beat a defender with so much racket speed, how they play someone like Kasumi Ishikawa with a steady block, fast pace of play near the table. Quite a different skill set, quite a different tactical experience, of course, for Miyu Kato. If you missed any of the matches earlier today, you can go to ITTF.com, check out ITTV to watch full matches. Best rally so far, and the longest for that matter. Both players testing each other. A lot of counter action. Not going for broke, but getting into the rally. In terms of watching matches that have already happened, you can do that later. The next four matches you will see here, those are the ones you want to watch. You are in the right place. 
It always makes it so exciting to know that there is so much shuffling within the program that these players are all capable of beating each other and it's quite unpredictable. Second towel break of the game, Miyu Kato just cleaning the top sheet of rubber to make sure that she has full traction and grip when she spins the ball. Miyu Kato extending her lead to a three-point lead. Started off strong in this game. Although Kasumi Ishikawa's made some nice adjustments to keep the rallies going. First three points of the game and the match were very quick. What a read. Kasumi Ishikawa gets that hand out there, just comes across the ball. Flip kills it for a winner, no chance. Easier said than done, but she varies. Miyukato varies the spin quite well. Again, with some of the shorter stroke serves, like the shovel serve coming around the outside of the ball. It's a little bit more difficult to read. Might be more effective against Ishikawa. Let's see. Push goes loose, goes long. Ishikawa within one point. I always wonder, I always forget to ask Kasumi Ishikawa about that sleeve. She always keeps that right sleeve tucked in, but doesn't cut it off. Doesn't get it sewn up that way, just likes to tuck it up. Maybe it's for versatility. When she's not playing, she likes having it a little lower. Or maybe she just likes the actual process of rolling up that sleeve a little bit. Sort of the way some people enjoy making their dinner. Good way to know what ingredients are in your food for sure. But in terms of ingredients, the ingredients of Miyu Kato's game right now has got her in the lead by one of 9-8 over Kasumi Ishikawa. Again, it's a best of seven match. So quite a long time, but taking the first is definitely good for confidence. And also a head start in finishing the match, of course. Oh, there's the power. Times this one just right. It's the first time we saw a forehand that was reminiscent of the power we saw displayed against Hitomi Sato earlier today. Spinny opening backhand for Mishikawa, but it comes up just a little bit high. Now two game points for Miyu Kato coming off of the third towel break. She's on the receive, and Kasumi Ishikawa has a lot of tricky serves, a little bit more to the middle of the table here to change things up for the receiver, Miyu Kato. Oh, top of the net, takes the point. I noticed that Kasumi Ishikawa's right sleeve was down for that point. Thought it might be distracting her, but she seemed to play fine through it. Very good at playing the ball from out in front. Keeps the racket head up. And in the women's game, taking it a little bit earlier if you can could give you a huge advantage. But it also gives you a little bit of time to pull back. A little bit of room for recovery in the fast rallies. Strawberry gets returned, and in the backhand to backhand encounter, Kasumi Ishikawa wins the exchange. Deuce in game one. Interesting look there, facial expression from Yukata. And moving over pays off. From that serve to play wide on the forehand side, starting there and coming to the length of the table. Gives her a little bit more room to keep the ball still half long. Caused some trouble for Ishikawa. Game point back to Kato. And the game continues to extend second deuce point. The receive game for both players has been trouble. Or I guess maybe the more positive way to say that is both players have very difficult serves to handle which is true. Both have a wide variety, an array of serves that they can pull out in tense moments. Now this has not worked as well. We've seen this serve before for Miyu Kato when it drifts off the table a little bit and she's starting on the backhand side. Ishikawa's just too comfortable to read to sort of, I'd say, be familiar with the space at the back of the table. 
She could pick her place for that shot. Down the line the opposite way. So now Kasumi Ishikawa with the advantage of serve, which has been quite valuable so far. But a quick backhand off the bounce. This is one of my favorite serves that Ishikawa does, and it's the first time we've seen it this match. High toss in near the body, wraps around and makes the ball bend back into the backhand side, but it's very tough to read the bounce. Not for Miyukato. Fourth towel break of the game, the only possible score. Last time Miyukato moved out to the wide forehand side where she's at now was effective, half long serve. This time longer, she goes for top spin and side spin. Ishikawa stays pinned, didn't have much of an answer. Tried to play it safely into the middle of the table, couldn't keep control. Game point back to Kato. Tested wide to the forehand side. The strawberry hasn't helped her out in a while. She's used it about four times now in this game. Unless she changes up the placement, which is quite difficult to do with that shot, Ishikawa seems very comfortable covering with the backhand and keeping it in play. Tied up again, fourth deuce point in game one. This time from the same position that hadn't been as successful, she changes up the depth of the serve. But still the third ball left a little bit to be desired. I feel like from that position, she just leaves open too much of the forehand. It's a little bit unpredictable where Ishikawa's ball's gonna go. Oh, look at this! Where did that come from? The backhand over the forehand side of the table goes with the Chiquita, rips it. From this angle, it'll be easy to see. Wow, Fan Zhendong out here. This is incredible. Kato, where had that been? Saves game point, brings it back to the fifth deuce. And now game point once again for Miyu Kato. If Ishikawa saves, we will see a very rare fifth towel break. And if she doesn't, we'll see a very rare lead for Miyu Kato over Kasumi Ishikawa. That would be the first time in a World Tour event, not because she's lost before, but because it's their first time playing. Oh, the spinny opening forehand, the long serve is not surprising enough. Miyu Kato right there to clean up takes game one 16 to 14. So the battle has just begun, but it's gonna be a tight one. That's how it appears. Game two coming up right after this. Back for game number two. It's Kasumi Ishikawa, who's trailing zero games to one right now. Looked up at the lights a moment ago to make sure she's not gonna lose her high toss serve in the lighting. It's a very important thing to do. Actually seems like it could be a fun way to trick somebody. Look up at the lights for a moment to check as if you're gonna do a high toss serve and then follow up with like Six inch toss, maybe seven, just to make sure you don't cause any problems with the umpire or get called. Strawberry again, 
Doesn't win the point outright, but manages to take it later in shots. If she can use that shot in different parts of the table, I think it's going to be really tricky. And it's one of the most aggressive strawberries probably in the women's game that I've seen. Miyu Kato. Kato, the strawberry farmer. Oh, after such a flat forehand to come back and miss the spinny backhand. Some difficult shots by Kato. And I like the change of placement on the serve. That should make it more difficult for Ishikawa, who you could see there from the shoes up. top of the net, but a very strong counter either way. This is one of the higher quality points so far in this match. Tested wide, right into the body, that crossover point, a powerful shot from Miyu Kato. Oh, this one comes back flat. A little bit of side spin on it too. Hits the ball, comes around it, and it bends into Ishikawa. A four to two lead. One more time, look at that. Just snaps the wrist as she's hitting it. What an unusual shot. But I mean, unusual shots are usual for Miyu Kato, so run the negative through that sentence. Net post and out. If the ball does come down on the table after hitting the clamp or the net post on your opponent's side, it's still alive. The ball's still in play. Doesn't happen here. Yesterday or the day before, I saw Benedict Ola knock the logo off the net. That's how hard he was hitting the ball. Tempted inside out forehand. A little bit rushed, and Ishikawa right back in this. There's the power. There's the Kato forehand that we saw against Sato earlier today. Deep push, gets a long ball back. The long push, very useful shot. If you know when to use it, you can make it quality. It's so interesting seeing someone rehearse, sort of shadow practice these shots that are so unconventional. Don't have the opportunity to see it that often. One of the thrills of watching Kato play. Another long push, surprise, it's deep to the backhand corner. The main reason that's surprising is because Ishikawa was already so deep in that corner, it leaves open the wide forehand side. I think that's what she's trying to get you to do. She's saying, yeah, I dare you to hit it out to my forehand, test me, see what happens. It's the bait, you hang out there. Quickest towel break in history. Goes over, wipes the palm of the hand. Could have been the table for that matter. Still using the shirt quite a lot for wiping the face, wiping the sweat. Long push is successful. The follow-up shot, not as much. Not too many players at this level hit flat shots really often. Georgina Pota has some quite flat shots. Nima Ito as well. Clever idea, but it's Ishikawa who controls the angles in this point. Ties it back up seven points apiece. Surprise placement goes out wide. Now the upper body doesn't tell where she's going. She opens the shoulders and turns, but lets the hand drag behind to play the other way. This makes it very difficult, very deceptive for Kasumi Ishikawa on the other end of the table. No! 
These are the rallies. These are the ones where they really have to dig deep and look for answers. Soft hands and touch shots in near the net at first, and then trying to find the elbow, the crossover point, the middle, before somebody plays a wide angle. <laughs> Not exactly sure what that sign was. It was almost like peace signs coming up, like at the end of a cheerleader routine, but instead it was one finger each. Oh, fast long serve. Not sure what the call was there. The way Kasumi Ishikawa looked over, it was almost as if the umpire called a let. Wow, it's a fast hooking serve. They both look over at the umpire. Interesting. I don't know if there was a service warning, but in that replay anyway, with a serve that fast, it's tough to tell. But in the replay, it was quite clear it didn't touch the net. Again, the intention of the umpires is nothing more than to help make sure that the match is played fairly. And so far, I would say they've done an excellent job here at this tournament. Once again into the net clamp. And now, two game points for Kasumi Ishikawa to tie up the battle. And it looks like it hits the post. Recently had a shot that hit the outside of the post and then went down the line onto the table, which is pretty rare. You can see that on the official ITTF Facebook page. just reminded of rare shots off the post. So Miyukato serving against two game points. And this time it's Kasumi Ishikawa who takes it 11 to eight, a little bit faster this game than a 16-14 victory. We'll see who takes game three and steps into the lead. Game three coming up right after this. Players back for game number three. Miyu Kato now starting off with the serve from the middle. Not a very comfortable shot there for Kato. Like she wasn't sure what she wanted to do. Wanted to play it deep to the backhand, but then changed her mind a little bit on the placement. Big backswing. We don't see that as much in the women's game, especially close to the table. But the forehand will have a much bigger backswing than the backhand, of course. More room for it. Ishikawa's got both sleeves rolled up now. Ready for action here. Leading two points to one in the third. Oh. 
Strawberry doesn't pay off percentage-wise. She's making the shots, but it's rarely earning her the point. I remember two points so far that Kato's won using the Strawberry. Again, for those of you curious where the term comes from, the banana flip creates the shape of a banana coming around the outside of the ball, and the strawberry is hitting the other side of the ball, the opposite spin coming from the backhand over the table. Now remember, age-wise, Kasumi Ishikawa, 24 years old, Miyu Kato, six years younger, 18 years old, 75% the age of Kasumi Ishikawa. So 5-1, Ishikawa quite in control here. Kato's gonna have to get clever. Ishikawa's just very steady. Her touch, her placement. This is when a lot of people ask, you might be the best player your friends have ever seen, and they can't imagine anyone who can beat you. Then you go to a local tournament, and there are all sorts of players there who can just handcuff you. Kasumi Ishikawa's having that effect right now. But remember, they are dead even in games. Excellent anticipation. Ishikawa moves out early, quick to that wide forehand to play it back deep to the opposite corner. Right into the body, Ishikawa apologizing. That's so close. Every once in a while, you'll see a ball hit a shirt. Players will give up the point immediately. That was actually the big, it's a confrontation. Ooh, very deepest part of the table with Zhang Wujin and Zhang Jiku. It was the Asian Games, maybe. Possibly Asian Championships just two years ago. There was a lot of frustration. Zhang Wujin, I guess Zhang Jiku thought the ball hit his shirt, and Zhang Wujin said no. Didn't. I think it happened twice. One of the advantages of wearing tight shirts when you play table tennis, don't have to worry about that as much as long as you're not too restricted. But wow, that was a fast game. With nine game points, 11 to 1, Kasumi Ishikawa. All ones across the scoreboard there. So now a 2 to 1 lead for Ishikawa. We'll be back for game four. Hopefully, it'll be a closer fight. We'll see. Game four coming up after this. Very focused assistant umpire gets ready for game four. Kasumi Ishikawa won 11 out of the last 12 points played. And a quick turnaround. It's always fun to see someone lose 11 to one and come back and take the first point of the next game. A little bit ironic. This is one of many reasons also that you switch sides after each game in case there is any advantage based on lighting, air conditioning, Whatever the advantage may be to being on one side, it just keeps things fair between the two players. And Miyu Kato there. Excellent side and top spin. Already doubles her score from the last game. This backhand, where is this coming from? She's used it in so many different ways, over the table, behind the table. Looking very steady right now. She's earning her shots. Ishikawa's gonna have to find some better answers to keep pressure on. Service placement. Ishikawa isn't finding the answers yet. 
Remember, 11 to 1 last game for Kasumi Ishikawa and Miyu Kato up 4 0. First point here for Ishikawa, finds the deep corner of the table. Very steady block, closed racket, good timing from Miyu Kato, creating a solid angle. Not just enough to keep the ball on the table, but the specific placement, the trajectory of the shot. Keeps the racket out in front, redirects it out to the forehand side. And Ishikawa doing the zombie out there, letting the head fall in disappointment. Oh, like a powerful forehand shot to the fly. She wasn't messing around, that's for sure. Second point here for Ishikawa. Again, using the opponent's power with placement. Miyu Kanta with the big opening attack. Oh, and a service there. Still a two-point lead for Miyu Kato. I mean, this is clearly much better than the game before, but evening out the score by taking this game will be crucial for Miyu Kanto. She doesn't want to have to fight from down 1-3. Ishikawa very expressive in those jumps out there. Misses the shot, gives two jumps while rotating. Fans watching, taking it all in. I think it's very important when you watch players at this level to try and understand how they do what they do. Break off the net there for Kato. Ishikawa keeps it in play nonetheless. Four point lead for Kato, again looking to tie up the game score. Out of all the different table tennis party games you could play with friends, I think a really fun one would be see who can name more women from the Japanese team. This one won't come down. Outstanding rally, and Kato extends her lead to a five-point lead. I bring that up because Miyu Kato was one of the top Japanese women. But right now, she's probably got, I'll look at the rankings. If I had to guess, I would guess seven Japanese women in front of her by world ranking. Several of those were here. And that's not counting Ai Fukuhara, who stepped out of the rankings to start a family, has a baby on the way. Excellent placement, the parallel shot. Ooh, Kato raising both arms. Funny thing is there's nobody there. It's not like she was turning to a coach, her father, and saying, what can I do? She holds her arms up for a moment, and then she tries to wiggle it out, stay loose. Second towel break of the game, still a four-point lead for Miyu Kato. Unfortunate for Ishikawa after such a strong serve right at the baseline. Gets a third ball, pretty much what you'd expect with a serve like that. It's a slower, spinny ball, something that pops up a little bit. Maybe not exactly what you'd expect, but probably better. And a service error. So now it's 10-4 for Miyu Kato. Six game points. It's not the same as an 11-1 victory, but it still sends quite a direct message. I don't mean that in a social media sort of way. 11 to four, Miyu Kato dominates in this game. Gets some revenge and it's tied up at two games each. We'll see who takes the next fifth game coming up right after this.
back for game number five. And in case you were curious, I did a little bit of research real quickly on ITTF.com. And sure enough, Miyu Kato has seven, exactly seven, Japanese women in front of her in the world rankings. So I don't know if you call that a lucky guess or an educated guess, but it worked out well. Either way, the only one not here in front of her for this tournament was Miyu Hirano. That's as low as I think I've seen anyone squat on a Tomahawk serve. I mean, Dima before a serve will do that. Kato does it right after. Look at this one more time. Boom, head down, chin to the table. Again, let's serve his quick catch. It's gotta be tough to get your center of gravity back up after getting so low. Sure enough, the ball comes back into play, Kato whether she was disoriented or what the case was. She wasn't able to keep it down. She's been raising her hands a lot, expressing that heavy top spin from Ishikawa. Again, appears that there's a Chinese rubber on the forehand, which is gonna make for spinnier opening forehands. It takes a lot of people some time to ad adjust to that Chinese rubber if you weren't used to playing with it. Changes the contact a bit. Many of the practice partners for the Japanese women are from China. So Kasumi Ishikawa definitely has some experience on her side. Especially when stepping into something so new. Like a different rubber, different top sheet, tackiness, all that. You have to change your stroke a bit to play with it. Kato doing an excellent job of covering the middle there, using the forehand. Good placement here, a little bit on the shorter side. Keeps some trouble for Ishikawa, keeps the pressure on. That was close, if it's just a little bit higher, a little bit longer, Ishikawa is very comfortable receiving that serve. Reads the top and side spin well. So they've each cleaned each other's clock out here, an 11 to one victory and an 11 to four victory, and now they're dead even. They've both shown that they can dominate. Wow. As far as moral messages being sent, 11 to one, that hits pretty hard. But in the end, it doesn't matter who scored more points. Whoever scores first, or the first to win four games wins the match. So there you have it. I'm very curious how many Japanese players we will see at the World Tour Grand Finals. You have to qualify by playing enough international tournaments in different continents as well. But the participation has just been relentless from the Japanese players this year. Now, India is actually following suit. Country's been investing. There were a lot of players from India here in this tournament, men and women. Some of whom did quite well but none to reach the TV stages of the matches just yet. Wouldn't be surprised if we'll see more and more Indian players reaching the televised matches. the table, Ishikawa stays in control. You know, we haven't seen a lot of the inside out forehands from Ishikawa. We've seen one or two long serves out to the forehand, but last I remember, she paid for it dearly. Miyu Kato was quick to react. Chop block does not come down. Ishikawa starting to run away. Fifth game when it's 2-2. It's quite important. Nobody wants to have their back against the ropes. And see how tacky that rubber is. The ball barely even bounced. So Ishikawa up four now. They were at three points each the last towel break, if memory serves. Really surprised. I don't know if I've ever seen players using eye drops when they go over to the towel box. But Miyu Kato's done it several times. A 
Solid opening backhand for a third ball attack. Must be those clear eyes. So snappy. Tucks back, a lot of wrist action. Serious power and spin both. But when Kasumi Ishikawa gets the opening shot, when it's a quality ball like this, look how much rotation is on it. Well, didn't have a chance to see, but you could see the effect it has on Miyu Kato as it jumps up quickly and jams her. Very ambitious shot. It's going to be a tough one. If she makes it, it'll be crazy. It'll be in the highlights. But a long serve to the forehand, and what a runaway. Ishikawa 11 to 5 from what appeared to be quite a close game from the start. We'll see what happens. If Ishikawa gets one more, she moves on to the women's singles final. Kato's got her work cut out for her, but has two games to her name. Game six coming up right after this. Back for game number six, Kasumi Ishikawa checking something out there. Not tucking in the shirt, but I don't know. Maybe messing with the drawstring, figuring out, making sure that she doesn't have any wardrobe malfunction to interfere. Interestingly enough, I think the only player I've ever seen with custom tailored little straps on the back, Aifu Kuhara would wear shirts that pulled in around the waist on the back. That being said, Zhang Jiko with Velcro on his shoes, same with Wu Yang. Extra reinforcement there for support. Oh, beautiful banana. Chiquita comes in from right at the back of the table. This isn't the first time we've seen this. God, though, so flexible with that wrist. Tucks it in, whips around the ball. Get a combination of top and side spin to add to the threat. So Ishikawa's got some good answers for that placement on the serve now. This one's a little bit shorter. Kato adjusting from the last time it came too long. But then the soft touch, Ishikawa's got it all right now. Beautiful counters, Kato is able to respond to some big shots. That opening forehand from Nishikawa. In very quick steps. It's just exhausting even to watch sometimes to think about what it takes to be out there playing this quickly, ready to go any direction. I mean, training is one thing. If you know where the ball's going, but out here you don't. Very nice. This is part of the reason you see people doing random drills where they don't know where the ball is going to go. You have to practice like you play in the matches. Obviously, that's not all your practice, but it's important that it's not strange to you the patterns that are coming out out here, that you know how to think like a fighter on the table. You're thinking in combinations to win points, not just keep the ball in play. And Yukato doing that very well out here. Again, at this level of play, you see a lot of combination play, the patterns that you set up, one shot and getting ready for what's likely to come back and then finish the point because you're anticipating where the ball is going. You have a sense of where it's likely to come back to. First tile break of the game, and Miyu Kato in the better position, leading by two. 
Remember, world rank number 30 at 18 years old is Miyu Kato, and that right there is Kasumi Ishikawa, world rank number seven, 24 years old, has been the leader on the team for some time, back and forth with Ai Fukuhara for a bit. And Miyu Hirano recently stepped in front just a few months ago. The power, even a step behind the table. When Miyu Kato gets it into her sweet spot, there needs to be more pressure here. Ishikawa hits a solid spinny shot, but it sits up a little bit, and it's going to get countered all day long for Miyu Kato. This one drifts a little long, Miyu Kato. Some very, I'd say, quirky physical reactions when she loses points out here. This ball drifts a little too long. Very expressive indeed. A lot of telling body language. She wipes the sweat from all over her face. Nice coverage. Reads it well, slaps it back down the line. A short stroke takes advantage of getting Ishikawa deep in the backhand corner. Ishikawa acknowledges, says, right, very nice. You don't want to feel the forehand. I mean, nobody wants to feel the forehand of Miyu Kato, but if you're the size of a fly and you're alive, it's the last thing you want. Backhand as well from behind the table. She's really controlling the rhythm out here. She's getting her selection of shots. If Miyu Kato keeps up this sort of play, finds the middle once again, I mean, this will go to a seventh, a deciding game. Just missing, going for the deepest corner of the table. Now, as far as composure and mentality goes, Yukato has to remember she's won a very high percentage of the last five or so points. She has to keep it up. This is a big point because Ishikawa had her running around, had her uncomfortable, had her chasing the shots, not hitting powerful balls. You can see that last ball was just spinny, and it's Ishikawa who's really trying to put it past her. At a time like that, maybe breaking the pattern, but it's the second towel break of the game, and a very methodical Miyu Kato sets it back down. I don't know if she got her eye drops in there before the towel. Wouldn't surprise me if she did. It's interesting to see the eyes of Kato, those clear eyes after the drops, how she follows the ball for a moment and then looks right back down at the racket. Ultimately, the players need to see, the receiver needs to see the contact. Much more important than following the ball on the toss. You know what's gonna happen. Gravity's been around for quite some time. It's not the newest invention. Oh, inside out forehand, so sweet. Ishikawa written all over that. This is her signature. It didn't come up a lot early in the match. Still a long way to go. But step by step, pasito, pasito, Kasumi Ishikawa can come back in this game. High arcing spinny ball goes long. Again, no coaches in the corners. I wouldn't be surprised to see a timeout. I think if another point goes to Ishikawa, Miyu Kato, again, I would not be surprised to see her call that timeout. So just within two points, here it is, the timeout. When you have such a big lead, you're up 9-4. If I remember correctly, 9-4, and then three points go to your opponent. I mean, this game is a must for Miyu Kato. You might recall not too long ago, 
I was saying if she keeps up this sort of play, this will go to game seven. Well, I guess that's true under one condition. If Kasumi Ishikawa keeps up the same play while Miyukato keeps up the same play, but that's the beauty of table tennis. In real time, the player has to adjust to the game on the other side of the table. Not the player on paper, not the player in the match before, but the player in that moment and how they're playing. Kasumi Ishikawa just has her arms above her head, stretching out the legs a bit. And of course the shoulders. Miyukato doing some almost calisthenics out there. Rotating the shoulders, trying to stay loose, keep the blood flowing. Now in tense moments, it's very easy for players to tense up a little bit, for their muscles to tighten, which slows down the movement. But whether it slows down or speeds up, either way, it's different than the muscle memory that you're used to. And back with the eye drops. Still a two-point lead for Miyu Kato. Cameraman loves the bowl on the elbow there. Signature. I wonder if Kasumi Ishikawa has a special name for that. Oh, perfect block right back into the backhand corner. This is a parallel shot right out of the timeout. Risky but smart play pays off here. Well, I guess it's smart because of the result, a clever idea. Three game points now for Miyu Kato. Oh, beautiful angle again, the backhand this time instead of the inside out forehand. Slightly softer shot comes back. And Ishikawa with that backhand wing just rips it out, loops it wide the other way. So back from the third towel break of the game, keeping that wrist loose. Two game points left to go for Miyu Kato. It's important that not only does Kasumi Ishikawa not let her head get into game seven yet, but that Miyu Kato very much the same. Both players focusing on this point right here. It's the only thing that matters right now. It's Kasumi Ishikawa who takes it once more, saves two game points, can feel the stress, not just see it, but feel it from Kato. Her head back at the ceiling. A few stomps, I want a golden goose daddy. One more game point for Miyu Kato. Wow, that was so close from way behind the table. These arcing, spinny shots, the ripping backhands, both sides. Miyu Kato has won so many points. I would say countless, but it's definitely countable. Probably something like five or six points in the last two games have been won with big shots like that from behind the table for Miyu Kato. And now here we are at Deuce in game six. Three game points saved, Kasumi Ishikawa now has the serve. As it goes in deuce, or from 10-10 on, alternating serves one at a time. Every single forehand came with a grunt from Miyu Kato, and look at her out there. Body language. I mean, there's no question about what she's feeling right now. She's exhausted, she's working so hard. And she's not finding answers because Ishikawa keeps getting it back one more time. Game and match point to the top seed, Kasumi Ishikawa. Oh, goes bold. Hopping around in the backcourt, can't put it down. There's an element of rock, paper, scissors that comes out in the sense of you're predicting what your opponent is feeling and thinking. And if Miyu Kato got that right intentionally, which we have to give her credit for and imagine she did, 
She's looking for Ishikawa to play super aggressively, so she shortens up her serve just a little bit, which leaves Ishikawa with not a great opportunity to really take the opening attack. Oh, Gomen, she says, sorry. A break off the top of the net bit of fortune at a very crucial point in the game. And the match, of course, earns another match point for Kasumi Ishikawa. And after a setup like this, that is a very fortunate escape for Kasumi Ishikawa. Well played indeed. You can see her put her hand to her chest as she celebrates. Miyu Kato got the third ball attack she wanted but could not capitalize and convert for the point. 13 to 11 in game six, quite a battle and quite a respectable opponent Kasumi Ishikawa had in Miyu Kato. But Kasumi Ishikawa lives up to her expectations so far to at least make it to the final. The question is who's gonna join her? Is it gonna be Mima Ito or will it be Honoka Hashimoto? The short pips chopper should be a very exciting match. It's coming up right after this. Don't go anywhere, you don't wanna miss it. You're watching the 2017 Bulgaria Open. Stay right here. up that sleeve a little bit. Sort of the way some people enjoy making their dinner. Good way to know what ingredients are in your food for sure. But in terms of ingredients, the ingredients of Miyu Kato's game right now has got her in the lead by one of 9-8 over Kasumi Ishikawa. Again, it's a best of seven match. So quite a long time, but taking the first is definitely good for confidence. and also a head start in finishing the match, of course. Oh, there's the power, times this one just right. It's the first time we saw a forehand that was reminiscent of the power we saw displayed against Hitomi Sato earlier today. Spinny opening backhand for Mishikawa, but it comes up just a little bit high. Now two game points for Miyu Kato coming off of the third towel break. She's on the receive, and Kasumi Ishikawa has a lot of tricky serves, a little bit more to the middle of the table here to change things up for the receiver, Miyu Kato. Oh, top of the net takes the point. 
I noticed that Kasumi Ishikawa's right sleeve was down for that point. Thought it might be distracting her, but she seemed to play fine through it. Very good at playing the ball from out in front. Keeps the racket head up. And in the women's game, taking it a little bit earlier if you can could give you a huge advantage. But it also gives you a little bit of time to pull back. A little bit of room for recovery in the fast rallies. Strawberry gets returned, and in the backhand to backhand encounter, Kasumi Ishikawa wins the exchange. Deuce in game one. Interesting look there, facial expression from Yukata. And moving over pays off from that serve to play wide on the forehand side, starting there and coming to the length of the table. Gives her a little bit more room to keep the ball still half long. Caused some trouble for Ishikawa. Game point back to Kato. And the game continues to extend second deuce point. The receive game for both players has been trouble. Or I guess maybe the more positive way to say that is both players have very difficult serves to handle which is true. Both have a wide variety, an array of serves that they can pull out in tense moments. Now this has not worked as well. We've seen this serve before for Miyu Kato, but it drifts off the table a little bit and she's starting on the backhand side. Ishikawa's just too comfortable to read to sort of, I'd say, be familiar with the space at the back of the table. She could pick her place for that shot. Down the line the opposite way, so now Kasumi Ishikawa with the advantage of serve, which has been quite valuable so far. But a quick backhand off the bounce. This is one of my favorite serves that Ishikawa does, and it's the first time we've seen it this match. High toss in near the body, wraps around and makes the ball bend back into the backhand side, but it's very tough to read the bounce. Not for Miyukato. Fourth towel break of the game, the only possible score. Last time Miyukato moved out to the wide forehand side, where she's at now, was effective. Half think number 30. But world rankings only mean so much in the sense that style matchups are a big deal, and we've already seen many upsets in this tournament. The fact that so many Japanese players on both sides have made it as far as they have, including Kenta Tazoe. And looking at the world rankings, Miyukato is the lowest world ranked player left in the tournament on the women's side as she puts in her eye drops there. We've even seen her doing it at towel breaks throughout. Kasumi Ishikawa checking out the lights. Now with all the advantages and disadvantages that come up in table tennis, Kasumi Ishikawa is left-handed, which gives her an advantage. That advantage is that the opponent is not used to playing left-handed players. Left-handed players are much more rare. But Kasumi Ishikawa far more experienced playing right-handed players than the other way around. So a little bit more, Kasumi Ishikawa in the opening round beat Mizuki Morizono four games to zero. Then earlier today, Asuka Sasao, four to zero. You can see some of her world tour, I'd say performances. The results up here, I guess, is a perfect word for it as it says on screen. Kasumi Ishikawa's taken many titles, but in 2017, still leaves a bit to be desired, is expected to take the title here in this tournament in Bulgaria. But again, it's an open field. You've got Mima Ito and Honoka Hashimoto on the other side. Kasumi Ishikawa, the most experienced player from Japan here. Strongest and most experienced. At 18 years old, Miyu Kato, eighth seed, world ranked number 30, as I mentioned before. A chance to see some of her experience over there. She really does, I think, the fastest strawberry I've ever seen in the women's game came from Miyu Kato. Was at the World Championships, she just turned that backhand and played it way out to her opponent's wide forehand with so much speed. This shot can be very effective. Miyu Kato in the opening round beat Misaki Morizono. After that, earlier today, Hitomi Sato. So I'm really 
quite excited to see how this style matchup goes down. Again, there's a lot of shuffling going on right now in the women's program for Japan because there are so many strong players fighting for just a few spots. Still three years before we get to the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. But in that time, there are probably about a good 15 or 16 women who realistically could be on the Olympic team. And I'd say about five or six that are way in the front runner, I'd say that are the front runners, but still, they've been beaten by some of the lower players on the team. And Miyu Kato starting off with the shovel serve with underspin to take the point. Now one thing about Miyu Kato's game that can be so, I'd say distracting for many players or difficult to face is that because her timing is so different and her shots are so unconventional, it just really breaks the rhythm of the opponent, makes them uncomfortable to find their game many times. Kasumi Ishikawa, with all her experience, will do her best and is pretty likely to find her rhythm at some point. But so far, this game has not yet. You can see the lower bounce on that tacky forehand rubber, the Chinese rubber on the forehand. Oh, almost comes down on the table. With a serve receive like that, Kasumi Ishikawa, again, from this angle, it's tough to tell, but Kasumi Ishikawa looks like she should be able to easily win that point. Kato still almost comes back. But this serve drifts a little too long, and Ishikawa's quick to recognize it, takes the opening attack. Clearing the fly out there, making sure there are no distractions. An unfortunate third ball opportunity for Miyu Kato. Tomahawk serve there. Comes out to the forehand as expected, just a little late to get there. That's Kasumi Ishikawa working with the spin. There was the strawberry. Coming around the outside of the ball, the opposite of the banana flip, or the chiquita, as they say in Japan, chiquita. After the brand name, of course, four bananas. Second strawberry, but this time it's adjusted. Kasumi Ishikawa reads the spin well, stays on top of it, and accounts for the side spin to keep it in play. <laughs> Strong opening backhand. This time the Tomahawk comes down with some underspin on it. Long push comes back and it's the opening backhand. See her rehearsing the strawberry out there, getting that wrist nice and loose. It's always interesting to see how someone plays after they beat a defender with so much racket speed, how they play someone like Kasumi Ishikawa with a steady block, fast pace of play near the table. Quite a different skill set, quite a different tactical experience, of course, for Miyu Kato. If you missed any of the matches earlier today, you can go to ITTF.com, check out ITTV to watch full matches. Best rally so far, and the longest for that matter. Both players testing each other. A lot of counter action. Not going for broke, but getting into the rally. In terms of watching matches that have already happened, you can do that later. The next four matches you will see here, those are the ones you want to watch. You are in the right place. It always makes it so exciting to know that there is so much shuffling within the program, that these players are all capable of beating each other, and it's quite unpredictable. Second towel break of the game, Miyu Kato just cleaning the top sheet of rubber to make sure that she has full traction and grip when she spins the ball. Miyu Kato extending her lead to a three-point lead. Started off strong in this game. Although Kasumi Ishikawa's made some nice adjustments to keep the rallies going. First three points of the game and the match were very quick. What a read. 
Kasungi Ishikawa gets that hand out there, just comes across the ball. Flip kills it for a winner, no chance. Easier said than done, but she varies. Miyukato varies the spin quite well. Again, with some of the shorter stroke serves, like the shovel serve coming around the outside of the ball. It's a little bit more difficult to read. Might be more effective against Ishikawa. Let's see. Push goes loose, goes long. Ishikawa within one point. I always wonder, I always forget to ask Kasumi Ishikawa about that sleeve. She always keeps that right sleeve tucked in, but doesn't cut it off. Doesn't get it sewn up that way, just likes to tuck it up. Maybe it's for versatility. When she's not playing, she likes having it a little lower. Or maybe she just likes the actual process of rolling long serve. This time longer, she goes for top spin and side spin. Ishikawa stays pinned. Didn't have much of an answer. Tried to play it safely into the middle of the table. Couldn't keep control. Game point back to Kato. Tested wide to the forehand side. The strawberry hasn't helped her out in a while. She's used it about four times now in this game. Unless she changes up the placement, which is quite difficult to do with that shot, Ishikawa seems very comfortable covering with the backhand and keeping it in play. Tied up again, fourth deuce point in game one. This time from the same position that hadn't been as successful, she changes up the depth of the serve. But still the third ball left a little bit to be desired. I feel like from that position, she just leaves open too much of the forehand. It's a little bit unpredictable where Ishikawa's ball's gonna go. Oh, look at this! Where did that come from? The backhand over the forehand side of the table goes with the Chiquita, rips it. From this angle, it'll be easy to see. Wow, Fan Zhendong out here. This is incredible. Kato, where had that been? Saves game point, brings it back to the fifth deuce. And now game point once again for Miyu Kato. If Ishikawa saves, we will see a very rare fifth towel break. And if she doesn't, we'll see a very rare lead for Miyu Kato over Kasumi Ishikawa. That would be the first time in a World Tour event, not because she's lost before, but because it's their first time playing. Oh, the spinny opening forehand, the long serve is not surprising enough. Miyu Kato right there to clean up takes game one 16 to 14. So the battle has just begun, but it's gonna be a tight one. That's how it appears. Game two coming up right after this. Back for game number two. It's Kasumi Ishikawa, who's trailing zero games to one right now. Looked up at the lights a moment ago to make sure she's not gonna lose her high toss serve in the lighting. It's a very important thing to do. Actually seems like it could be a fun way to trick somebody. Look up at the lights for a moment to check as if you're gonna do a
Уважаеми зрители на БНТ HD, приятели на тениса на маса, здравейте от Арена Сарел в Панагюнище, където след минути ни очаква една много наситена вечерна сесия от международния турнир по тенис на маса Сарел България Опен 2017. Двубоите за разпределението на медалите започнаха още от вторник с квалификационните групи. Близо 200 състезатели от 4 континента стартираха в третото поредно издание на турнира. Но сега на полуфиналната фаза останаха само най-заслужените да са в битката за първите места. Битка, която ще бъде решена в утрешния ден. И сега вече е време да насочим поглед към това, което ни очаква при дамите. Полуфиналите противопоставят Касуми и Шикава първата поставена носителката на два олимпийски медала срещу... Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the ITTF Seamaster 2017 World Tour Asarel Bulgaria Open, coming to you live from Panagurista, Bulgaria. I'm your commentator, Adam Bobro, and we are getting in to the women's singles semi-finals. Very first matchup of the night. We've got Miu Kato right there, who's in outstanding form, showing us earlier against Hitomi Sato. What a performance from this young player. And she'll be playing against the former number one player from the Japanese national team, Kasumi Ishikawa, who is the top seed in this tournament. Miyu Kato won four games to one over Hitomi Sato just earlier today. Kasumi Ishikawa won four to zero over Asuka Sasao in her last round in the quarterfinals. This will be another best of seven match. It'll be the first time these two have played on the world tour. Should be quite exciting. And here's the schedule ahead for today. Following this match, we've got Honoka Hashimoto, Mima Ito, and then after that, Kenta Tazue and Kenta Matsudaira. Following that will be Dimitri Ovtra versus Quadri Aruna, a match that many people will be quite curious about. Quadri Aruna has beaten some of the best in the world, but the best European player has not yet faced him. So we'll see what happens if Dmitry Ovtarov can dodge the forehand, outplay the touch and the fast footwork of Quadri Aruna. And if Quadri Aruna can stop the backhand, the serves and everything else that Dima has to offer, it'll definitely be an uphill battle, but wouldn't be surprised. Anything can happen with Quadri Aruna. But right now, just the same, Kasumi Ishikawa and Miyu Kato be playing out here now Miyu Kato's game is quite unconventional her serves are very difficult to receive her forehand stroke as we saw against choppers earlier today at least against oh and before well I was gonna say Hitomi Sato but here you can see Kasumi Ishikawa very carefully checking out the rubber of her opponent's racket Miyu Kato to make sure she was familiar with how bouncy the rubber is how thick the sponge is what she can expect from both sides it's funny because it is up to a certain level. It almost doesn't make that much of a difference. As a beginner, you wouldn't know the difference looking at these two rackets, but at the professional level, anything from just a change in thickness of sponge or a new top sheet of rubber, anything of that sort, even if it's the same model, could make a big difference for both of these players. So head-to-head -head again, they've never played before. Kasumi Ishikawa currently world-ranked number seven. Miyu Kato, world 